Okay, so here we're looking at the geometry theorems that we need to prove. There are three theorems that we need to prove, theorem 11, 12, and 13. But today we're going to start with theorem 11. What I'd recommend doing is watch this video through once uh, without trying to take anything down. Then um, come back, watch it again, but while watching it the second time, take, take down the question or take down the theorem, the proof and then watch it a third time again going through your notes and make sure you're uh, scribbling in any extra details into your notes uh, to help you try and learn it. Okay, So theorem 11 states that if three parallel lines make segments of equal length on a transversal then they will also make segments of equal length on any other transversal. Okay, So what should be given in the question is here. You'd be given three parallel lines, L, M, and N, that cut a transversal. Now the transversals, the, the lines might be have different names. I've called them L, M, and N. The transversal might have a different name. It might not be called T, such that the length AC is equal to CE. Now what this looks like, you'll be given something like this. Three parallel lines, L, M, and N, and a transversal. Now, a transversal is a line that cuts the parallel lines. This name, the name of this line is, it is a transversal. It cuts two or more other lines. So, following on what we are given then. Um, we're given another transversal, K, with B, D, and F being the mark, uh, points that are marked off. Uh, where it's cutting the lines L and M. And what we want to show, so we're given the fact that this section here is equal to this section here. That is, the length from A to C is equal from the length C to E. And we want to be able to show that this section, B to D, is equal to D to F. So that's what I want to actually prove. So to prove then, I want to prove that B to D is equal to D to F, as I've just stated. Now our construction, what we would draw in on the diagram of what we'd be given. You would construct the line that is parallel to T. Okay, So true or through this midpoint here, construct a line that is parallel to the transversal T. So th through D, construct another transversal, um, J that is parallel to T. So J is parallel to T and mark off A prime and E prime. A prime is just where it would be. Uh, so A is here, A prime is over here, E and E prime, although you could call them anything you want. Now the proof then is actually quite a very simple proof. If you are looking at the parallelograms A, A prime, D and C, A, A prime, D and C, and the parallelogram C, D, E prime and E. We know that the length A, C, this length, is equal to this length here. And we know that C, E, this length here, is equal to D, E prime, is equal to this length here. But what else did I know? I knew that this length here is equal to this length here. So that implies that this length is equal to this length. So as AC is equal to CE, we also know that A prime D and D prime D E prime D, E prime being here, are equal. So those two yellow lengths are equal. So let's color them in. So this length here is equal to this length here. We know the measure of the angle BDA prime is equal to E prime DF prime. No, sorry, E prime DF. That is this angle here is equal to this angle here. And how do I know that? Well, because they're vertically opposite. What else can I spot then? You might be able to spot a Z shape here. 
And what does that remind us of? Well, Z, the way I always remember it is Z is the end of the alphabet. What book ends the alphabet then? A. The other end of the alphabet is A. So a Z shape should remind you of the letter A, which reminds me of alternate angles. So E prime F D and D B A prime are alternate angles. So in here, I know this length is equal to that. I know this angle here is equal to this angle here. And through vertically opposite angles, I know this angle here is equal to this angle here. And what have I got? I've got two triangles, the triangle B A prime D and the triangle D E prime F. This shows that they are congruent through angle side angles, reminding you of junior cert trigonometry there. If they are congruent, it also means that this length must equal to that length there. And that is proven then that the length BD is equal to DF. Okay, so key points of the proof again. You're given your three parallel lines and they've cut off equal sections here on your first transversal. You have a second transversal but not lines marked off. Our construction is this extra transverse, transversal J and then we're using congruent triangles and we're using angle side angle. And we're getting there by using the lengths in a parallelogram, opposite lengths are equal in length. We're using vertically opposite angles and we are using alternate angles. Hopefully that's helped you anyways. Would recommend going back, watching the, or in the second watch of the video, uh, take down the question and then focus on the key points of it.